The often mentioned, but never depicted, eugenics wars became an important part of Star Trek canon in the original series episode Space Seed. According to this episode, in the 1990s, the notorious Khan, Nunian Singh, and several other genetically engineered humans known as Augments rose to power as dictators over large portions of Earth. These tyrants were eventually overthrown after four years of bloody struggle. As important as they are, Star Trek writers have been vague about the exact nature of the conflict, such as when and where the wars took place, and who was involved. However, the pilot episode of Strange New Worlds did provide a tantalising historical summary, putting the eugenic wars into their proper context. Just as World War I set the stage for the even more devastating World War II, the eugenics wars served as a prelude to a series of ever-escalating conflicts culminating in World War III. They also shaped society for many centuries afterward. With all that in mind, I'm Tom Roberts Finn for Trek Culture, and here are 8 things you didn't know about the eugenics wars. Number 8. The Augments were created in the 1950s. Just as the first atomic bombs were created to bring a swift end to World War II, the Augments were created with the best of intentions. Geneticists created them during the Cold War era in the hope that the so-called supermen would lead humanity into an era of peace after centuries of war. But they were wrong. Along with their superior physical and mental capabilities, the Augments were arrogant and aggressive. Their creators were unable to correct these character flaws due to the limited capabilities of genetic science at the time. As one of their creators succinctly put it, superior ability breeds superior ambition. That scientist would pay for his own arrogance and ambition when he was killed by his own creations. By the time the Augments were fully grown, they were ready to put their superior abilities to use. However, they were more interested in conquering humanity than leading them into an era of peace. Khan came to power in 1992 and eventually conquered one quarter of the world's population. The next year, his fellow supermen took control of over 40 nations. Number 7. The Augments ruled as despots. In Space Seed, Khan described the era of the eugenic wars in romantic terms, calling them a period of great dreams and aspirations. He countered Spock's argument that they were fought to end tyranny by saying that they were an effort to unite humanity under a single ruler much like Rome under the Caesars. He claimed that while there were many petty dictatorships in that era, eventually one augment would prevail over the others, bringing peace and order to the world. Contrary to Khan's high-minded rhetoric, the Augments ruled their territory as authoritarian dictators who treated ordinary humans as little more than slaves. Khan, however, considered himself a prince who ruled as a benign dictator. Unlike his fellow despots, Khan didn't slaughter his own citizens and his regime was peaceful. He didn't engage in warfare until his territory was attacked. Because of this, he was still admired in the 23rd century as the best of the tyrants. Number 6. They may have been largely fought covertly rather than through open war. In the Voyager episode Future's End, the USS Voyager travelled back in time to 1996. Although this was the year the eugenics wars ended, Voyager's crew didn't see any signs of warfare. In Venice Beach, people pursued leisure activities such as roller skating, bicycling, and sunbathing. In the Hollywood Hills, Tuvok in Paris observed people enjoying the Griffith Observatory's exhibits and planetarium. In downtown, the crew witnessed well-dressed business people and shoppers. The only signs of social strife the crew witnessed included homelessness and an encounter with members of a right-wing militia. So, like now. A possible reason for this was explored in the novel series Star Trek The Eugenics Wars. These novels depicted the eugenics wars as a covert conflict similar to the earlier Cold War rather than open warfare. However, Star Trek Picard showrunner Terry Metalis has suggested that Spock might have been wrong about the date. Metalis and the showrunner's writers concluded that World War III's nuclear exchanges generated electromagnetic pulses that erased many electronic records, a reason that the eugenics wars were later in the 21st century. Star Trek prodigy writer and story editor Aaron Waltke has also suggested that the temporal Cold War may have shifted the timeline. Number 5. Captain Jonathan Archer Other regions of the world were not so lucky as the United States. One area devastated by open war was North Africa. One of the soldiers involved in the North African campaign was Captain Jonathan Archer's great-grandfather. As depicted in the Enterprise episode Hatchery, during the Enterprise's conflict with the Zindi, Enterprise encountered a disabled Zindi ship containing an insectoid hatchery. Much to the crew's confusion, Captain Archer became obsessed with protecting this hatchery from harm. To illustrate his point that even war has moral rules, he related a war story about his great-grandfather to Trip Tucker. During the eugenics wars, his great-grandfather was in command of a battalion. The battalion was evacuating civilians from a school in the middle of a combat zone when they came under attack from augments. Wanting to limit collateral damage, Archer's great-grandfather contacted his augment counterpart and successfully convinced the augment commander to hold fire long enough to finish evacuating the school. 
Number four, casualties were in the millions. How the eugenic wars began is unknown. As Spock pointed out in Space Seed, by the 23rd century, records from the 20th century have been sketchy. The aggressive and ambitious augments may have begun fighting among themselves, or ordinary humans may have risen up against them. However the wars started, governments around the world were soon drawn into the conflict. By the time the tyrants were defeated, entire populations had been erased from existence through genocidal massacres and mass bombardments. The official death toll was 30 million. However, other estimates ranged between 35 and 37 million. Whatever the true total number of deaths was, another major but less obvious casualty was the human psyche. The human fear of genetically engineered beings lasted well into the 24th century. Bans on genetic engineering shaped everything from medical research to human interactions with other societies. They even jeopardized the careers of people associated with benign forms of genetic medicine. Number three, Earth's governments hid Khan's escape from the public. When the eugenics wars ended in 1996, the governments of the world sentenced Khan and more than 80 of his fellow supermen to death as war criminals. However, the augments had disappeared before they could have been arrested. In order to prevent a panic, the governments hid the fact from the general public. As it turned out, Khan and his followers had acquired a sleeper ship used for deep space missions in the days before warp drive. Khan christened the ship SS Botany Bay after the Australian penal colony. He and his followers fled into space with no particular destination in mind. Two centuries later, the Botany Bay was encountered by the USS Enterprise. Kirk and his crew revived the hibernating supermen without fully realizing the threat they posed. It wasn't long before the revived Khan led his supporters in an attempt to take control of the Enterprise. Kirk eventually thwarted Khan's efforts and exiled him and his supporters to the uninhabited planet Seti Alpha 5. Number two, they had far-reaching effects. Following the eugenics wars, thousands of augmented embryos were secretly put into cold storage and the genetic engineering of humans was banned. This ban on genetic engineering made pariahs of those who had been treated with genetic therapy and led to conflicts with the Illyrians, a race known for genetic modifications. Illyrians were banned from Starfleet, the medical technology was banned in the Federation, as was mixing of human and Illyrian blood. As depicted in the Strange New Worlds episode, this bias against Illyrians ultimately endangered the career of Enterprise First Officer Una Chin Riley. In the 22nd century, Arik Soong stole several augment embryos from Cold Station 12 and attempted to raise them himself. Their aggressive tendencies overcame Soong's attempts to temper their behaviour. These augments threatened to incite war and mass murder just as their brethren from the eugenics wars had. Klingon experiments with stolen augment DNA led to the release of a highly contagious virus that affected the appearance, biology, and personality of a large number of Klingons. Number 1. The Eugenics Wars were the first in an escalating series of wars. As shown in Strange New Worlds, the Eugenics Wars turned out to be a part of an era of ever-increasing violence and civil unrest. It was followed by the Second Civil War, which grew out of a series of protests against the US government. Another factor depicted in the Deep Space Nine episode Past Tense included the civil unrest that followed the development of sanctuary districts as a response to homelessness. A second eugenics war followed the second civil war, which ultimately escalated into World War III. The cataclysmic nuclear exchanges during the war led to the death of 30% of the population and the extinction of 600,000 species of plants and animals. As depicted in the Next Generation pilot episode Encounter at Farpoint, the post-atomic horror that followed persisted into 2079. And that was 8 things you didn't know about the eugenics wars. Make sure to like and share the video and subscribe if you haven't already and tap the notification bell to be alerted of future videos. If you can think of anything that we may have missed or you just want to tell us that New Trek isn't canon over and over and over again then let us know down in the comments. You can find us on Twitter at Trek Culture and on Instagram at Trek Culture YT. You can find myself on Twitter at Tom C. Finn and on various other socials as well. Thanks for watching and until next time, bye bye.